Um, so I'll begin by introducing our first speaker, Dr. Keith Ian Quintine. Uh, Dr. Keith Ian is a consultant in public health medicine in health protection with HSE Public Health Area A. He was previously working as specialist in public health medicine in the Department of Pub on Public Health HSC North East since July 2017, and is currently the air quality lead in the Public Health Medicine Environment and Health Group and a member of the Air Quality Information Working Group. He's an adjunct uh, senior lecturer in public health at University College Cork. He has also several peer-reviewed publications in infectious diseases and environmental health. So, uh, Dr. Keating, you're very welcome. Thank you very much for the introduction, Niall. I just hear that and I'm not 100% sure it's me. But anyway, good morning, colleagues, and thank you very much for the opportunity to present before you this morning. Uh, my brief this morning was to deliver a presentation on the impact of poor air quality on our health. It's a bit of a wide brief, and I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be able to completely get through it within 15 minutes, but we're going to I'm going to try my best at least to concentrate on the caveats for thought in terms of how we can move this forward in that regard um, as stakeholders. So just an initial um, declaration and please report I have no conflict of interest in terms of before we proceed with that. And as I said, as part of this, um, as part of my presentation this morning, I just want to give you a bit of a whistle-stop tour to highlight important things with respect to air pollution and its impact on health. But again, food for thought and hopefully stuff that we can move forward as a group. Um, with that in mind, as I said, I'm a public health doctor, so we always go back to the issue as to why air quality is, is a bit of a concern. And we come back to Maslow's hierarchy of need, and this is certainly something that came through from the speaker from the WHO this morning, which kind of like highlighted um, it's a great physiological need, a requirement for us to have access to air. And certainly to qualify that for you all in the audience, it's important that we have access to clean air. My apologies, isn't projecting as well, but the physiological needs at the bottom, it, air is certainly something that's a requirement. Air, food, access to shelter um, are certainly very important things that are required. With that in mind, it's important for us to be able to note and appreciate that within your lifetime, you'll probably inhale about 250 million litres of air, significant quantity of stuff that's passing through you from that point of view. And it's important to think if you're interacting with an environment that's not exactly the most ideal and pristine, we can see that we are becoming impacted by... Um, interactions with um, air pollutants and through that we have a capacity to inhale about 20 million, 20 million um, particles with every breath that we take. Uh, with that in mind it's consequently something just to think of. I know we just after just having a, um, a, a break where we were eating but certainly just to concentrate on the left to see what a healthy lung looks like that hasn't been potentially exposed to a lot of air pollution and uh, the lung on the right, which unfortunately has been exposed to a fair bit of air pollution. So giving you a bit of a, a stark snapshot as to, you know, the overall impacts that you can see from a tangible point of view. So as I said, uh, health impacts of air pollution are certainly something that we do need to consider from that point of view. And it's important, and as again the speakers this morning have highlighted, it's a major scourge um, air pollution. And not only because it has impact with respect to issues related to climate change, which unfortunately, as Laura mentioned this morning, it sometimes gets subsumed by. But it's important from the prospect of the fact that it does also impact at the individual level and those at a wider population level as well. As a healthcare professional, I need to be able to have consideration for the fact that it reduces, it has a capacity to reduce your life expectancy by just under a year. And as um, um, Anna had said from the World Health Organization, it has a potential to link, uh, be linked to about just over 4 million, and that's just ambient air pollution, so outdoor air pollution, to about 4.2 million um, premature deaths worldwide. Again, um, the Lancet Consortium, which recently did a review on that, has seen um, just, a, just above that 4.5, so within the, same, within the same space, but again, premature deaths, which hopefully, which would have more than likely been prevented. Over dessert last night, Pat, Kenny and myself and John Wenger were sitting after we had dessert and were obviously on a major um, glucose high and we were kind of like thinking, what is the major thing as stakeholders that we bring to the table that's necessary in terms of being able to tackle this problem? And I guess the most important issue is public awareness and being able to feed that with those with whom 
exist within this environment and engage from that point of view. Um, it's important from the point of view that all of us as experts and stakeholders within the group are able to link and feed on this and also hopefully um, link with the state, link with the policy holders to ensure that sustainable solutions are put in place for the reduction of this. And just as a bit of a caveat, and as again that was mentioned by the Minister this morning, um, the IRS setting there in context, again an estimate of at least 1,400 premature deaths per annum are reported uh, within, the Irish, within the Republic of Ireland. It is something that we don't always like to think about, but um, the impact of air pollution, and as it does vis-a-vis -vis health, there are costs always associated with delivery of it. So that's a consideration that we also need to give. You know, uh, the World Health, the World Bank estimates that just uh, just over, just under, sorry, a quarter of a trillion um, is linked to lost income. So it does have a societal impact that we do need to consider, and they do consider it a bit of a sobering issue from that point of view. At a European level, just under a trillion um, is related or, or linked to the economic impacts of it. So again, that's a consideration there. Within the Irish context, I know this might be a bit of dated information, but the air-related costs are linked to, are, are projected at, at just about two billion. And that hasn't necessarily been adjusted for inflation, but if you think about it, the health budget is just about 20 billion, so that's a tenth of the health budget that, you know, could be potentially linked to that from that point of view. It's a considerable sum of change being taken from the exchequer. So again, it, it is an important issue from that point of view. Um, as mentioned previously, the World Health Organization does link and highlight um, major pollutants there and concentrate, and we can certainly, oops, my slides aren't moving well, and we can certainly, and I'd like just to concentrate very quickly on particulate matter, ground level ozone, and the oxides of nitrogen from that point of view. Um, as a doctor, I'm going to have to throw up a very busy slide, and this, I've just thrown it up from the point of view of one, just to highlight, is a multi step process in terms of being able to. Um, outline the impacts of air pollution within the system. And the second point is also to be aware that air pollution, although we do sometimes look at it in silos in terms of nitrogen dioxide and particulate matter, they work in concert together and do ultimately exert an impact on our bodies. So it is certainly something for consideration. Particulate matter is the major air pollutant that we have concerns and issues for. And as mentioned throughout the speakers earlier, the size of the particle has an impact and capacity based on the depth it gets within the human system. And again, that has that has that has impacts in terms of both the acute impacts, health impacts, and potentially the chronic impacts of air, air quality. We don't just breathe it in, it goes into our circulatory system and moves around. So from that point of view, we do need to consider the interest, particularly of like issues of new and evolving issues like ultrafine particulate matter, which again, do have human health impacts we need to consider. Um, again, as I said, there is a linked relationship which is well established in terms of morbidity and mortality, particulate matter. And again, with it's very easy to look at those graphs and see with rises in the particulate matter levels, there are rises in poor health care poor health outcomes, so cardiovascular health, non-accidental deaths, respiratory illnesses, and indeed everything related to cancer. Again, it's not, it's not something we're happy with, but it's certainly something we do need to take on board in terms of when we think about progressing issues of policy. Ground level ozone is another important issue that we, lead, that we have to interact with from that point of view, and the health impacts related to that, um, as I said, again, can trigger problems, local problems in terms of your um, ingestion of it, in terms of cardiorespiratory issues, but it can also lend at a, a deeper level to increases in damage to the DNA structuring and, again, impaired cellular function. I am a doctor. I am going to have to mention some <laughs> involved patho pathophysiology, pathophysiological issues, but Again, these are things that we have to consider as part of issues with respect to building policy. In terms of considering, again, looking at the overall and country-specific excess mortality linked to ground-level ozone, we don't have the same level of problem within the Republic of Ireland. It is an issue, but not as great as it can be for other jurisdictions. But this is just to demonstrate for other countries around the world the, contrib the contributing factor that ground-level ozone can have from that point of view. So it is certainly something to consider and food for thought for us all. Um, the oxides of nitrogen, again, are an anthropogenic issue, uh, again, the majority of them are linked to transport within the Republic of Ireland. And again, the health impacts, mainly respiratory, but again, with long-term exposure, long-term exposure, they can go deeper and can also trigger internal, more fundamental physiological issues uh, for those of us who are breathing them in. So it is certainly something for consideration. 
I can't, as a healthcare provider and a public health doctor, stand up here and not mention COVID, so I will have to mention it. It is the pink elephant in the room. And certainly with the transport, trans as related to transport, we have been able to see with the transport restrictions, the unique transport restrictions that were put in place as part of the COVID, uh, as part of the pandemic, um, as part of the pandemic controls, basically, we certainly were, we have been able to demonstrate, and this is information that was passed on from the EPA, we've been able to demonstrate that there has been, and this is just Dublin-related um, figures, that we can certainly see an overall fall. And this is just a simple example, just to show you of a simple transport measure in terms of taking, physically taking the, or ha not having the pickles on the street, uh, le led to a noticeable reduction in noticeable reduction in nitrogen dioxide circulating within Dublin. Um, and then I decided, and this is collaboration between the EPA and the HSC, we overlapped or overmapped that with Dublin admissions for individuals with um, respiratory disease. And this is, again, local data, which is interesting to see. And, just, and you can certainly see the blue line. There is a fall off, and that was indeed a significant fall off. So again, a simple measure. It isn't something that we're able to sustain because transport restrictions, we can't put them in place permanently. But it's certainly food for thought in terms of bringing about transport restriction, sorry, transport related policy and highlighting the importance and potential overall impact there. Um, harms that um, air pollution can cause. I know for quite a few of the speakers this morning have certainly highlighted and concentrated on the mortality issues linked to mortality issues linked to air pollution and air pollutants. <coughs> But I think we also need to remember that there is a wider impact linked to exposure to ambient air pollutants. And it's kind of like that um, kind of like that iceberg effect. There is considerably a lot more that goes on in terms of impacts on health uh, to, to the population as a whole in terms of visits to the emergency room, visits to your local GP, requirement to go to ambulatory care for persons who are asthma to get their inhalers picked up. And again, uh, you know, issues with incremental reductions in your or lung function, and I know Eilish will probably bring that up in terms of her discussion a bit later, but it's certainly food for thought that this has potential, or air pollutants have potential to have wider societal impacts. And I know we do focus, because I think death is an easy, an easy marker to use, to use in terms of trying to get buy-in, but there's also consideration in terms of the wider societal impacts, in terms of people being away from work, people not being able to attend school, those knock-on impacts uh, which we do need to consider, basically. So at the, at the first um, um, World Global Conference on Air Pollution and Health in 2018, um, the Director General made a, a very chilling comment when he highlighted that air pollution was a silent public health emergency. Um, it is, I probably can agree and disagree with him in, in some ways, it is indeed an emergency. It isn't indeed silent. This is something that we've been aware of and aware of for many years. It is something that a collective group of colleagues, we probably do need to try as best we can to make a significant change there. And I'm using this as my call to arms speech, so apologies for that. Um, it is important that we're able to uh, appreciate that air pollution not only that doesn't only necessarily have an economic impact, it has a wider societal impact. And absences from work, absences from school, those things knock on and reduce the overall productiveness and usefulness of within our societies. It's important that as colleagues, and that's what we all are here, colleagues and stakeholders, that we're able to influence the policy makers to design and combat anthropogenic production of air pollutant air pollution. It's important from that point of view that we're able to put in place sustainable measures for everyone. And when I say that, sustainable measures for everyone in terms of at a personal level, sustainable measures that are in place at a population level. So I think those two things need to be certainly just taken on board from that point of view. As a healthcare provider, it's important for me to be able to, at least as part of my medical training, it was always important to be able to close off on a positive note. And indeed, I'm going to do that from that point of view. And just to highlight to yourself, and I'm hoping Irene and, and Pat will certainly support me in that, that air quality in Ireland in general, within the Irish setting, is good. It is not 100%, it is, it's very good, but we want to make it better. And I think that's certainly something that I think we all have to give some thought to as stakeholders working in this area. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, thank you. Thank you.